Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Hey, Chris, this is Gail hey, Chalco hey. and Chris Nelson with Healthcare 911. And what is today, Chris? Jeep day? What is it? No, it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is Jeep day. Yeah, it's Friday. Every day is Jeep day. Uh, <laughs> Y'all, we've got a fun show for you today. Chris uh, is the CEO of Jeep Underground Magazine. And she has just got a real enthusiasm for Jeeps and the term Jeep therapy. Chris, tell us what Jeep therapy is. <laughs> Jeep therapy is wind in your face and breeze on your knees. Well, you know, you, as a matter of fact, coming up in the next few weeks is National Topless Day. And that's actually a Jeep term because the weather is getting warmer. So we get to take the, the, the tops off our Jeeps. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. But Jeep therapy is amazing, people. So how did you get involved in it, Chris? How did you get involved oh, in this subculture? Oh, my God. You're going to go back to when I was young. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> let me show you if this old woman can remember. Uh, back in the day when I was very young, um, we lived on a farm, and my dad had a Jeep, an old Willie's Jeep. And, Man, I love that thing. And that's the first thing I learned to drive. Now, you learn to drive a Jeep, an old wheelies, you can drive anything. <laughs> so so did crazy. he use the Jeep on the farm, Chris, for, yeah, for yeah, any work? Yeah. Or? We, we did. It didn't have a top or anything like that. So we used to put the feed buckets and stuff in the back of it and go out and feed the horses or the cows or whatever. And we'd, t we'd always go the long route, me and my brother, because, you know, we wanted to uh, drive the Jeep, you know, took us like an hour to do a 10 minute job, but it was always fun. We just used to fight. Who's going to drive the Jeep? Who's going to drive the Jeep? Well, I always won, of course, because I'm a badass, now, but, with, um, <laughs> with your involvement with Jeep underground magazine, are you involved in any organizations where you connect with other people that are absolutely. very much into the Jeep culture? You kidding me? There's 50,000 clubs. I have my own. It's called Jeep underground that I connect with women from all over the world. Uh, we all are Jeep enthusiasts and all have the same thing in common, which are Jeeps or anything. You know, it could be, it doesn't necessarily have to be a Jeep. You could have a, a, a quad or a motorcycle. It doesn't matter. You know, as long as you're out in the woods and you're just going out there and, and the wind in your face and you're getting muddy and dirty and just, oh my God, the therapy is amazing. So yeah, I mean, at, this club is amazing. Uh, Jeep Underground. I'm also in a, in a, in a club now that's called uh, Rough Riders. It's a local club here and we go out on and on Taco Tuesdays and we go out and we do tailgating and have tacos and we meet at a taco joint. And we all have the same interest. So we all park our Jeeps, you know, next to each other, like 30 or 25, 30 Jeeps. And it's amazing and it's fun. And and we all talk and, and, and have a lot of the same things in common. And um, it kind of it's kind of nice during the week to have that camaraderie because, you know, we're all so tired and and beat from our jobs or whatever it is we're able to release by going out in our Jeeps and meeting everybody at these taco joints on Taco Tuesday. So it's really a lot of fun. And we also uh, do uh, runs on the weekends and things like that. So it's just this great family, this camaraderie that we all have in common. It's great. So one of the terms that as I was, you know, I do not drive a Jeep upon occasion. I drive a Kubota tractor and it has big tires. too. <laughs> And you get the wind in your face. So I love I'm, that. I wind in my face. So I have my tractor therapy. Um, you know, <laughs> Same thing. Is, is that the, the Jeep therapy when you're out off the road is that you have a time to process emotions and reflect. And can, can you yeah. tell us a little bit about how this you feel like this helps you? Um, absolutely. You know, being especially during COVID, you know, being stuck in the house or or uh, the stress of that and um, the, the, the media and the news and everything was going on. You just, ah, you need that release. You know, yeah. you gotta, I mean, yeah. come on people. 
So you get out on, uh, you take a hobby up like motorcycles or quads or camping is huge or your Jeeps and you get out into the wilderness out where there's not even any cell service people. Come on, no cell service. And you get out there and you're out there in, in just peace and quiet and nature. And you're going down this amazing trail that's possibly muddy or not. And you're just <laughs> bumping around, you know, and you're like, Oh my God, is it? And let me tell you, it sounds uncomfortable, but it's not. It's just amazing. It's an amazing feeling. You see things. You see, there's a bear. Oh my God, you know? And oh, look at that beautiful river. And I mean, you don't see that in your house or in your backyard. Well, some people do, but you know, most of us so, don't. But so you really feel amazing. like it? it's relaxing and it's, oh. it's, it's putting you in a better place emotionally. So oh, you're lowering please. your cortisol level in the brain, cortisol. which is yes. healthy. Yeah. Yes. Every week I lower my cortisols and everything else I can lower because that's what we need. We have to have that release. And Jeep therapy is my release. Whether, like I said, whether it's camping, jeeping, quadding, whatever it is, you need that release. You have to have that. So tell yes. us a little bit about the sense of community that you found with your Jeep Underground magazine, Chris. How do people find you, number one? And number two... What kind of t connection do you have with them? Because I know you said it was a global community you're involved in. Oh, it's in. absolutely global, all over the world. Um, well, my website's jeepundergroundmagazine.com, so that's pretty simple. Uh, my group is an all-woman's group. The magazine's not, but my group on Facebook is Jeep Underground, or you can go, anybody can go to Jeep Underground Magazine on Facebook. So there's many ways to get a hold of me if you're a Jeeper and you're an enthusiast, join by all means. The magazine is amazing. I get men and women from all over the world that 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 submit us stories uh, about their Jeeps. And that's what this magazine is about. It's about the regular person like you and me, Gail, that are out there hustling and bustling all day. But then we have these amazing Jeeps and we're able to go have Jeep therapy and we want to share it with everyone else. So I get these amazing stories of people and their Jeep therapies and what they're doing. And it is so amazing what they're doing in their Jeeps. They, you know, they have a Jeep dog and their Jeep family and they all get out and they go, they go topless in their Jeep, not topless literally, but they take the tops, topless yeah. off their Jeep and they just get out there with that wind in their face, you know, and the breeze in their knees and, and they love it. And it's such an amazing feeling. And so I get to hear these stories. A lot of these groups, you know, they do these great runs for children that, uh, from instance, we have a group, uh, I believe it was in um, Pennsylvania that wrote me a story about a child that had leukemia and, and hundreds and hundreds of Jeeps showed up to do this rally, this, this ride. And all you could see was a sea of Jeeps on this highway. And it never ended for this child to make money, to help him with his uh, chemo and his therapies that he needed. And it was amazing that this, this community came together to save this boy's life. And that's just a, a chip of the iceberg. Let me tell you, they are saving lives Jeep. These Jeep groups and clubs are saving lives all over the world and people. You know, during COVID, you know how excited I get. During COVID, we have a lot of these stories in the magazine. Kids were having birthdays, especially youngins. Yeah. And they couldn't get out and celebrate. Couldn't go to Chuck E. Cheese. You couldn't do, you know, it was awful. So what happens? The Jeep groups, the Jeep clubs finds out, okay, this eight-year-old's having a birthday. So we're all going to get together, these, these clubs, these groups. We're going to meet at Walmart, blah, blah, blah. And when we all get there, we're all going to, you know, go in a caravan past this little boy's house. His mother will have him out front. And we're going to just and, and just throw candy and gifts and everything we can at this eight-year-old little boy. So what do you think? This little boy comes out in his driveway and he sees, you know, 100 Jeeps, Jeeps coming at him, throwing candy and presents at him. How exciting is that? That is awesome. Right? I want to remind our listeners to put comment and ask questions in the chat. If you're on W4HC or if you're on um, my Facebook page, type your questions in. I have some that somebody right. already sent in from Latin America in an email this morning. So when you're Yay, when you're doing an luck. event, I know when you're doing an event like that, Chris, is it generally somebody that may be a member of the Jeep group that no. you're in? No, absolutely does not have to be a member. Uh, you know, like I said, the smiles on these kids' faces. One, I can hear my neighbor's little boys having a birthday and I'm going to call Rough Riders and whoever else uh -huh. in my area to meet me at, let's say, Walmart or wherever at eight, at, at, you know, let's say 10 o'clock in the morning, Saturday morning. And we're all going to head past this kid. So we stop. 
we all go run to Walmart or whatever. We had already get our candies and gifts and we put them in the Jeep and we all are going to take off in a caravan. And this does not have to be a member. Just let a Jeep group know. My son and my daughter's having a birthday and it's horrible because of COVID. Can you guys yeah. do something? You know what? We are on it because that's what we do. It's an amazing family. So it's, you know, what you're doing, Chris, is you're reducing yeah. feelings of pain that people right. experience. You know, you're bringing love and joy and fulfillment. Right into right. the moment now and since the pandemic's going on you know it was bad enough before with day to day living you know bumps along right. the way but i think the last 12 months have been really hard on yes. everybody it um, really really was you know one of the things we did too or i didn't i wasn't actually involved in this at the time because i had covid but during this this time uh, around thanksgiving the jeeps were all getting together and they were going into the parking lots of hospitals and flashing their lights as appreciation for these frontline workers, hundreds of Jeeps. It was amazing. Wow. But that's what we do because we appreciate and we love these, these frontline workers like you, Gail, you people are out there and my wife are busting their butts every day in, in fear and, 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 and seeing death and, and horrible things with COVID. So let's show them our appreciation. It was amazing. You know, well, you know, humans are involved in tribes. And right. I was on a call earlier this morning and, and the walk away and the, and one of the takeaways was find your tribe. Would you consider yourself part of a Jeep therapy tribe? So it's, it's a community. Absolutely a community. And it's an amazing community and it's not just Jeeps. We're talking Jeeps because I'm a Jeeper, but yeah. the motorcycle clubs and the, the quad clubs and the big pickup clubs and they're everywhere. Uh, a car clubs, you know, we have a Corvette club here that does amazing things. Get into something like that. It's a therapy. It's a family. And it's so good for everyone. And it's a passion. So, Chris, can you tell a difference in the way that you feel like emotionally when, you know, you're at the end of the week and then, you know, you've got, you know, maybe your dinner event coming up with your Jeep group on a certain right. night. Can you tell that that lifts your mood? So you can feel oh. your brain chemistry change? Absolutely. Carol, <laughs> you kidding me? I go from here to here in 2.3 seconds because yeah. once I see a bunch of Jeeps out in the parking lot tailgating with tacos, woo, it's on. I'm happy. All that crap from the week or whatever's yeah. going on, see you later. Just for that moment, I'm in, I'm in my place. I'm in my happy place, my therapy. Now, you know, you know and, I, I read something in your magazine that I really liked. A mom had written it where she was taking her kids. Oh, was, that she had sons and they were going to a sporting events practice. And so, you know, the weather had been bad. Well, all of a sudden the sun comes out. Mom stops the Jeep. She gets out and lets the top down. Well, the kids are holding their <laughs> hands up and it immediately changed their mood. You know, all of a right. sudden they were happy to be going out. Probably the, the athletic field might have been a little bit muddy, but, you know, here go the kids with, you know, the wind in their hair and they were all smiling. You know, they go from being right. serious to all smiles. I loved reading that from that mom in your magazine. How, right. And how does that that change the dynamics of everything, the moods, yeah. everything that went on during the day, all the crap went out the windows, literally. You know, I, I, I just sold a Jeep to a friend of mine in North Carolina, dear, dear friend. And this Jeep was, and I, you know, I, I love her to death. And she bought a Jeep from me. She wanted to be a Jeeper because she saw how passionate we are. And she's part of this club and part of my magazine as well. And so Belle bought my Jeep and her couple of her grandkids came. And her grandkids, they drove here to get my Jeep. And her grandkids are like, you know, they're cool. They're, you know, they're, you're younger. They're probably, I think, uh, 12 and, and, and 11. You know, they're just like, oh, you know, just kids. And the minute they saw that Jeep and got to sit in the back seat and go for a ride, everything changed. They had their arms up. They're like, woo, woo. You know, everything changed with those kids. And it just made me smile big. I mean, those kids were so happy. It changed everything, all the dynamics. So do you see any similarities, Chris? You know, people talk about retail therapy. This, you know, right. when we know that releases in endorphins right. and the satisfaction you know, yeah satisfaction so do you think mm -hmm. jeep jeep therapy is better than that you already own the jeep so well let me tell you something i'm not the biggest shopper in the whole wide world i just get in what i gotta get and get out and get in my jeep then i'm happy but you know what um they're close 
I'm going to say for shoppers, that's a close race. That feeling that you get, that satisfaction, the endorphins yeah. that are released. Absolutely. You know, um, you're going to go out and buy a coach purse. How do you, you know, you're like, oh my God, you're so happy. Same thing getting the back of, you know, getting behind the wheel of a Jeep. Oh my God, everything's just, oh. And, you know, especially with my Jeep, it's such a show Jeep. And when I'm going down the street and there's people taking pictures of it, they're like, oh my God, that's an amazing feeling. Uh huh. I don't think shopping can hold a candle to that feeling. So, you know, but, and shopping is a sense of control. It gives you right. a sense of control. Do you feel like Absolutely. you can let go a little bit of that control and feel a little more freedom when you're out in your Jeep? Absolutely freedom. Absolutely. You don't have to have that super control. You just let it go, man. And you're just going to be you and have the best time. And it's just, it makes you young. I'm a 60 year old, 60 year old woman. And back in the day in the seventies, I remember six, my 60 year old grandma and women in that age group were just, you know, sitting and knitting and had really no life. Yeah. I'm 60 years old and I'm out there having a blast. I'm 30 years old again when I'm in that Jeep. Okay. So whether it's a motorcycle or camp, whatever it is, you're 30 years old again. It feels amazing. And it feels amazing to be a part of a group of people, all ages, to, to be able to have that relationship with. It's, it's amazing. So how often do you connect with your comrades in your Jeep group, Chris? Is it weekly? Every week. Um, I say for this week, unfortunately, I had a prior engagement. But every Tuesday, we meet up and just about every Saturday. And some Sundays. Last Sunday, uh, one of the girls in the, in the group um, had some beautiful tires just these big rims. And when you're a Jeeper, modifications are really important. And, and I know how Gail feels about big tires. But somebody donated these huge tires for her Jeep. They just gave them to her. They were beautiful rims and tires. So we all went to Travis's house. He's kind of like the head dog of, of one of the head dogs of, of the Rough Riders. We went to his house because he has a shop. He's got all set up for Jeeping and fixing Jeeps and modifying Jeeps. So we all went, quite a few of us went and watched them manifest this, this Jeep that had regular tires into these big tires and a lift kit and all kinds of cool stuff, right? And that's what we did Sunday. It was like church for us, you know? Unfortunately, I didn't get to stay a whole, whole much long, but I would like to stay longer, but I, we stayed about an hour, but it was amazing to be there to see the, the, the manifestation of this beautiful Jeep turn into this butterfly to us Jeepers. And, yeah. and and have everybody around there um, watching and and having sandwiches on the tailgate and it was just it's such a beautiful feeling and you just can't imagine and we have this every week if we want it we're we're not committed to have to go all the time no but I choose to go to Taco Tuesday night because hey I get tacos right and I get to be with everybody I love so hell yeah I'm going so and then, oh. you know. Not We've got people yeah. telling you hello in the chat room, Chris. Hello, Hi, Arthur. Guys. We see you. We see your comments. Go so, buy a Jeep if you don't have one. Buy sure yeah. Know. Oh, no, I can't buy a Jeep, Chris. The tires are too big. <laughs> <laughs> I won't You're have them tires. Tires. <laughs> And don't you dare, dare tell anybody on the radio right now that I have to use a stool to get in my Jeep. <laughs> don't you tell no one. And now they're talking about bedazzling my stool. I'm like, you're not bedazzling my stool to get in my Jeep. Have you have you done any travel trips in your Jeep, Chris? Have you gone out to Sedona or any any of not, the national parks? I have in the past, but not in my new Jeep. We, I do want to go to uh, Moab. That is my biggest thing. So Mary and I will be heading out to Moab, uh, hopefully within the next year or so, probably the next year, uh, for a nice uh, week trip. Uh, Moab is 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 the mecca of Jeeps. It's a place to go. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's in New Mexico. I, it's it, it's the most beautiful, most spiritual place on this planet to me anyway. And to be able to have my spirituality and Jeeps all in the same place, oh my God. I mean, I might as well just be in heaven. Seriously. So it, they have Jeep trails like you can't imagine. Um, and they're nice trails. There's nothing bad, but they're beautiful and the rocks. And, have you ever been to Moab? Yes, I have. I, Moab, oh. Utah is where I've been. I mean, Utah. I'm sorry, Utah. I said Moab, that. Utah. Okay, Utah. I thought maybe there were two cities. No, no, no. I'm sorry, Utah. Yeah. It's absolutely an amazing place. So, yeah, we will be going there. And I have a few other trips that are, are lined up for sure. Well, mm -hmm. I have a story about a Jeep and how I knew I wasn't going <laughs> to buy one. <laughs> 
We had a, a chef a few years ago move from Atlanta out to uh, Cave Creek, Arizona. And he goes, Gail, you need to come out for a weekend. And I said, well, all right, I'll, I'll come out and, <laughs> and see a little bit about it. I've been to Phoenix, but never been to Cave Creek. So I fly into the Phoenix airport and he says, call me and I'll pick you up at the airport. So up coming to pick me up at the airport is a big red Jeep with the biggest tires on it. That I've ever seen. <laughs> now that's cool, man. Come on, Gail. It's cool. So that, that was my first ride in a Jeep, but he actually drove up to Sedona before I came back and right. went off roading over some of the yeah. big rocks. Yeah. And I, that was the most beautiful scenery you can imagine. You know, you get off the main road and yeah. um, it was, you know, it was nothing yeah. but gas in the car. That was That's that right. was it for the entertainment. And That's it right. was it was very exhilarating. You can tell mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you have to stop and take time away from the computer and the cell phone mm -hmm. and stop everything to make time for the jeeping. And I think that's right. one thing we'd like for the audience to take away is this actually stops the process of whatever, you know, we all have things we have to attend to at home. Right. But for a couple of hours, you have to stop and focus on yourself. Right. So that you, me you therapy is the Jeep therapy. Would you agree right. with that, Chris? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have to tell you a, a quick story. There's, I love that the families all get into this Jeep thing and the children are all about Jeeps, right? I mean, it, 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 it goes into lineages now. You know, I have people in my group that there's three generations of Jeepers. It just, it stays in the family. Oh, wow. it's, a, it's a lineage. It's, it's in the bloods and the DNA. I don't know what it is. It's just, it's, it's, it's big addictive. tired DNA. It is. It's big tired DNA. And you can probably take a microscope and look real close on a Jeeper and you'll find a tire in there. I'm not kidding you guys. So anyway, this, uh, this little boy, he's all about Jeeping with his family. Uh, for during COVID realized that these frontline workers in the summertime were, were, and it wasn't just frontline, anybody that was working, he yeah. wanted to um, go around with the Jeep clubs in the area and give out popsicles to everybody. Oh, wow. Popsicles. And they're like, what? This little boy wants to give all these people popsicles. It's a hot summer. It's been kind of an awful summer because of COVID. Let's just put some smiles on everybody's faces with popsicles. And I'm going to tell you something. These clubs all got together and they all put monies together and they bought thousands of popsicles. I have pictures in my magazine. It's last month's magazine if you guys want to look at it. And I'm talking probably 10,000 popsicles. Like, oh, what? wow. And how old and was this child, Chris? How old he was, was I'm going to say he was, if, if I believe, eight years old. Yeah. He wanted to do this. So they all figured out, okay, we're going to do this. So they all got these frozen popsicles and everybody had these containers to put them in with ice and whatever. And all these Jeeps went all over town delivering popsicles to all these people. It was just amazing. What a beautiful, and they all, every, this whole town was Popsicle Day USA in this town. And everybody was eating popsicles, but it put smiles on everybody's face. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people. I mean, I'm not kidding you guys. This was a huge drive. And I was like, oh my God, really? This is so awesome. An eight-year-old boy thought of this and put all those smiles on people's faces. Yeah, at Pretty a time amazing. when people were so sad. Right. Yeah. And he told his mama, you know, I, I, people were sad. Let's make them happy and buy them a popsicle because popsicles make me happy. Yeah. Right? Yeah, they do, Chris. They do. So <laughs> how how would you challenge anyone like me? I would question me, me even wanting to, to, to do Jeep therapy. You know, I drive a four wheel drive, but it's because I travel and I need it for snow. So I and what is it you drive? My, what, what do you drive? A Kubota, a Kubota tractor. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm out at the farm. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, it's how, how would you challenge us to even think about being open to going to test drive a Jeep? You know what? Go test drive a Jeep. Let me tell you something about Jeep. You want to go to, you want to go, you want to talk about that? Okay. So if you've never had a Jeep and you're probably thinking, hey, this is kind of cool. Maybe I need, you know, I need a new vehicle. And hey, what's better than buying a vehicle that could give me some great therapy and be cool, you know, because we're not always cool, right? Because if you drive Jeep, you're cool. So anyway, you go and you just drive up and you talk to the guys. Or don't you know you talk to the guy you want to look at these Jeeps? If you stand in front of a brand new Jeep or the Jeep Gladiator pickup or the Jeep, you know, JK or JL, whatever it is you want, 
you stand there and look at this Jeep and you're going to fall in love. And they're not as expensive as you think they are. There's lower line Jeeps and there's more expensive Jeeps, just like on any other vehicle. They are an amazing vehicle. And, they're, and they have a, 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 they used to have a bad rap where they were top heavy and they were flipping and, and they were not as, as a safety vehicle to have for families, but they are now. They're one of the top safety vehicles for families. You know, they have the airbags around the whole, the dual airbags. They have the, the uh, roll bars on them are super, I mean, they save lives. Uh -huh. they're, they don't they don't bend like they used to when you flip them or whatever. I mean, they are amazingly safe now. So go. That's one thing to think about. Okay, so now you're standing in front of this Jeep and you're thinking, okay, let me test drive it. You go out test drive it. The suspension and stuff on them are a lot better than they used to be. They used to be when you drove a Jeep, you're like, you know, right? Not even. <laughs> they're not. They're actually because I've had older Jeeps. It's like ugh, my kidneys are like, ah, you know, I need a kidney belt to drive in it, but not anymore. They're very smooth like a car. They're amazing, right? So those are things to think about now. Let me tell you another thing about Jeeps. They have the best warranty package of any vehicle on the road. The best warranty, the, the engines are, are, are have lifetime warranties, people. Come on. They have the best warranty of any vehicle on the road. Okay. Not only that, so I'm giving you all these little incentives, people, to buy a Jeep. <laughs> so these are great incentives. Not only that, when you buy a Jeep, you're like I said earlier, you're getting all that therapy, right? But the incentives to buy a Jeep are, are, are through the roof. Really, really good incentives. So not only are you getting all these great warranties, but you're getting other incentives as well to buy a Jeep. And one more good thing about a Jeep is the trade-in values on them never diminish. They stay very high. They're one of the highest trade-in valued vehicles on the road. So those are things to look at, right, when you're buying a vehicle. So if, if somebody was looking at this, would you say that when you would you say that Jeep therapy is a capitalist value would you a capitalist would, yeah a capitalist value that was one of the questions that i got in my email today to ask while yeah. we're on the show today if if you want to define capitalist the way i see is a, is a situation absolutely yes right so you would defend jeep therapy to any critic somebody would say oh there's there's absolutely. nothing to that and I'm thinking, yeah, there is a science to this. There is head. a science to it. There is but a like science I said, to it. Absolutely. And it doesn't just have to be the Jeep. It's just I happen to be uh, very, very much into Jeeps. And, and that's why we're talking about Jeeps. And that's my passion. But there's people that are passionate about their campers. There's people that are passionate about their Harleys or their motorcycles, whatever it may be, their scooters. It's what makes you passionate about. But that's what gives you therapy or those kinds of of vehicles yes. that can give you that therapy that we all need. We have to have some sort of release. We okay? all have to stop from the stress. You know, I'm one of these people that work 24 seven. Right. You are. I yes. finally have had to take a day and stop at least once a week because patients call me. You know, right. I get messages while I'm asleep at night. I usually return the call the next morning. You know, it may take me two or three hours to call people back. And I've learned I feel better when I stop for 24 hours. Then I can emotionally have that that reprieve, that that sleep. The you know, my vital signs are lowered. I'm not right. stressed out. Well, I called you the other day. Issues. I called you the other day. What were you doing? You were out on your jeep. I mean, not your Jeep. I'm sorry. You're out on your Kubota tractor, yes. tending to your goats yes. and, and your, your baby goats and everything. And that was your therapy. You were so yeah. happy when I was talking to you. Everything about you and your energy had changed by yeah. talking to you that day. Then other days when I'm talking to you, when you're on the run to the airport, you oh. can tell the, the difference. You could tell that you were so relaxed and so happy that day with your baby goats and your, and your tractor. And probably yes. your horses were there. And so you were uh, happy. They are. It's, it's, um, you know, I'm going out to going out to the farmhouse later on this afternoon when we get off the air. And I told you I've been recovering from my second COVID vaccine. Right. 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 I right. had no fever, no, no chills, no nothing, but you know, the sore throat has been mm -hmm. tremendous, Chris. That's and, a um, mm -hmm. yeah, it is. And I had the Moderna vaccine if anybody in the audience wants to know. So, you know, I need a little bit of farm therapy this afternoon and probably some yeah. Kubota therapy so I can, you know, take a break and let my body finish getting over the, you know, this reaction right. to, to my second COVID shot. And for me, stopping is hard. You know, it's, it's like I have to literally stop, you know, turn the computer right. off, not worry about the client's emails. They'll be there, 
you know, when yeah. I come back. If it's a patient, they have my cell phone and they're going to call right. me. But I think the Jeep therapy is such an awesome thing because you actually have to get out in nature for that. Right. And, um, you it's know, the camaraderie, beautiful. the camaraderie is, is of the community. Yes. Is, I think that's what we've everybody's missed. I like people. I told a client this morning on, on a Zoom call. I said, I hate Zoom. They thought it was meant because I didn't want to be on camera. I said, it's, that's not it no. at all. I said, no. I'm a people person. I want to be right. there with the people. Right. And that's what we've missed this last year or so, a couple, yes. almost two years. But this is yeah. what we're missing. And so you take your family and get out in the in the nature and start feeling again. And and, and I find too that and, and and you're clinical, so you would know this, but I find when I'm out in my Jeep and feeling good or out with my friends and the camaraderie, my body feels better, my arthritis even feels better, and I believe it helps my immune system. Is that yeah, that that's that's a hundred percent correct, Chris. I think I would have had a much more severe reaction. And, you know, I've had no fever, like, for example, to my second COVID vaccine. Right. Um, then, you know, it, I think it would have been much worse if I hadn't stopped, you know, and slowed down, slowed down the stress just a little bit for the last couple of days. Um, I actually had to stop. I had the, I had such a bad sore throat. I couldn't eat. Um, could, you know, I was, I'm going to get a liter of fluids when we get off the air today, just because I'm right. dehydrated. So it's, I think it's important for people to realize, you know, we all have to lift our mood when we're feeling sad. Everybody's right. felt isolated and depressed right. and alone. You're grieving the pandemic. You're grieving the loss of a job, closures of businesses. You know, a lot of people have had deaths, you know, occur because of the pandemic or just, you right. know, overall life traumas this past year. So when you were talking to me about the Jeep therapy and the more research I started doing, I was like, this is a real deal. It you know, is a real deal. It is the real deal. So <laughs> you're releasing the dopamine it is right. in, in your brain. Dopamine, the um, cortisol is going to be lower. The serotonin levels, you know, a lot of our psychotropic drugs work on those things. This isn't a pill you're going to take, guys. You're going to put mm -hmm. the keys in the ignition. Well, I, well, I'll tell you, I do drive a Land Rover and it's got a sunroof. So when I open the sunroof, I do feel it. You know, I feel the sun on right. my face. I feel an immediate mood lift. There you go. So you're going to feel even more of that with, with the top off a Jeep, you know, just yeah. like this mom I was, I, I read about in your magazine, taking our kids to their sporting practice. You know, all of a sudden they were not sad anymore. You know, homework right. didn't matter. The, the muddy sporting field that they were headed to. Right. It was the sun in their face and, and the wind blowing their hair. And they were, woo, you right. know, doing their thing. Right, right. It, the, the dynamics of all that changed instantly. You know, just this beautiful release of just beautiful energy. And it's, it's wonderful. And I see it all the time, you know, not just with me, but other Jeepers. And, you know, one of the things we do as a Jeep club too, and a group, and, and it's it, it, a family around the world, is we're driving down the road and there's a Jeep coming at you. We do this on the steering wheel wave, right? That's the Jeep uh -huh. wave. There's different ways of Jeep waves, but this is the main one. Okay. It's right here. So you like got your piece, steering wheel. Yep. The you do your steering wheel. Oh. Yeah. You're holding your steering wheel and you just go just like that. And everybody does it back at you. Not all Jeepers, but most. Yeah. And it's just this camaraderie again. We, we don't even know these people are coming at us in a Jeep. We're coming and oh, we're all waving. You know, it's, it's crazy, but it's yeah. a good feeling. Instantly you feel good. Well, we have, uh, I read in the media, oh, this has been over the last few days. It's funny how when we're preparing for a show, everything seems to come at us, you know, as we're leading up to Friday. We've got a, I read about a four-year-old in Atlanta who has leukemia and he's on chemotherapy. And so one of the Jeep groups in Atlanta was doing a fundraiser for him to, and, and it may have been a bake sale to help right. raise some money for that family to help pay, pay medical bills. So it was, you know, and I don't think they even knew them all, Chris, but it was, it was re very touching to me. And this wasn't just 10 or 15 people. I mean, there were thousands of posts on this Facebook page, uh, this child's, you know, public page in Atlanta, what right. they were going to do to try to help raise medical bill money. So it's, it, 
do you find that are people bringing their animals with them as well? Or is it more just something for people to be in the Jeep, Chris? Can you bring your dog? Oh, no, 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 no. It's huge. I have a three-legged Jeep dog. We all have Jeep dogs. Most of us all do. Hell, I know a lady's got a Jeep lizard. I mean, you have <laughs> Jeep snakes. I mean, and Roxy, you'll love that. I know a lady that has a big old python, and that python goes almost everywhere with her in that Jeep. Unless it's oh, really she cold. wouldn't have any friends because I wouldn't come near that car. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. And yeah, oh, no. That's got a, I know Lace got a bobcat. So, I mean, everybody has different animals, but animals are a big part of jeeping. A big part of jeeping. So, um, ha have you, Mary, set up a, you know, how you do a map, like for places that you've traveled, Chris? Right. Do you have a map for places that you plan to travel or have traveled with the jeep? Well, mentally, yes, we have a plan. And one of them is Mo Moab. And I do want to take a trip in our jeep. Uh, across the country like uh, I want to try a couple of really cool trails that are up in North Carolina I want to visit some, a very dear friend while I'm up there I'd like to go to Atlanta Georgia and see you in my Jeep and I'd like to take off and maybe find a couple of your trails up in that area so yeah. we have this we have this really great in our minds uh, of trips that we want to do together in our Jeep and we will uh, we're planning this for next year uh, to go up through Atlanta and, and North Carolina and hit some of these great uh, trails up in the, in the, in the mountains of your areas. Now, so, what kind of, I'm going to ask you a couple of nursing questions. What kind of preparation do you do when you're, know you're taking the top off and you're going to be out in the sun? Are you wearing sunscreen? Oh yeah, you, absolutely. Okay. You know, we're always safe. Um, when you're in a Jeep, you know, of course, you're and you're out on a trail in your middle of nowhere. You need to have some amenities, and one of them is, of course, your your, your sunscreens and stuff. We always have water in the back of the jeep because right. in the jeep there's a big whale, and we have a bunch of stuff in the back. You open it up, there's a well, a deep well that you can put stuff in. So we have tools in case something happens. We have food in case blood sugars drop, or we lost right. snack or okay. something. We have water. We have blankets because you don't know when you're out in the middle of nowhere what could happen. We could be stranded for days. So we think of those things. And so most Jeepers that I know, we all have these care kits in our Jeeps just so in case you, something happens. Well, that's brilliant. I'm, I'm glad to hear there's some advanced planning that goes oh, in yeah. just in case Abs there, there is absolutely. anything that happens. Right. We just had a raffle with a kit um, that was pretty amazing. It was a, a, a kind of a real nice bag and it was full of all kinds of cool stuff, a compass, uh, a couple of knives, uh, uh, silverware, um, a little uh, burner that you can uh -huh. use to cook food, uh, canned food. It was just the coolest bag of all kinds of stuff that you could survive on for days. So, you know, those are things that you want to have in your Jeep. If you are going out into the wilderness for, you know, a matter of time, you could, especially if you're alone, because people, uh, you know, they do get out yes. there alone in the wilderness. Yeah. Uh, you could break down. So think yeah. about those things, you know. So with a little bit of planning, you can do the off-roading, have a lot of fun. Do mm -hmm. the people actually, do you see a lot of Jeepers go out on the trails alone, Chris? I'm a person like I like to ride my horse alone. I'll go out trail back, right? I'll go horseback riding for two hours by myself. Right, right, right. I, I see a lot of Jeepers do with their families or they'll just take off by themselves. My son drives a Jeep. And he'll go up into the mountains in New Mexico where he lives. He's stationed out there in the military. He'll take off and, and do what he calls his naked camping uh, all by himself in the middle of nowhere because he loves to have that time with nature. Right. And um, and he does it all by himself. He's probably 100 miles from no one. and But he always has his kit and he's always prepared. He's a smart kid. He's military. He's lifer. He's been in for 17 years. So he knows what he's doing. But that's a very common thing, you know. Um, these, these jeepers get out into the wilderness by themselves just to get in touch with nature, go hug a tree or go throw a fishing line or whatever it is. You know, they need that. And that's what my son does. Are there any kind of COVID precautions, Chris, people need to take when they're going out? You know, you're outside. If you've had your vaccine, right. people should be pretty safe without a mask on. It, would well, that be a correct statement? Right. When we're outdoors, uh, is uh, like Sunday, we were all out at this gentleman's house working on a Jeep. And we were not wearing our masks, of course, because we have all been vaccinated. But we were outside. And we always still, we still have this embedded in our brains because it was so embedded during this horrible pandemic, yeah. pandemic when it was blowing up to stay 
a six feet apart or five feet apart, whatever it was. But we still, I noticed we still tend to do that. Uh, we did a Taco Tuesday thing up here uh, last week, and we all kind of sort of kept our distance. And I'm like, wow, you know, that's embedded in our brains, I guess, because we all were kind of standing apart. There wasn't any hugging or anything. I saw a few handshakes. But, yeah, but when we're inside, when we, like, go in to get our tacos or we go right. into whatever, we do wear our masks, quite a few of us. And even though we still had our we – we've had our shots or right. immunizations, we still – feel the need when we're inside a confined area to wear our masks. And I think that's smart. Well, I think it is too. And I wear, I wear my mask, you know, I've had, I've had the second shot. We know I'm, and I can assure you, I'm still recovering from the side. Effect. Right. But this is six right. days later. I would expect tomorrow to feel much better. Right. It um, took me about that, that long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. than I have felt this week. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to know that we're, we're going to start seeing the end to some of the COVID precautions with the pandemic. So in addition to that feeling free in that Jeep, we hopefully soon may hear, you know, clinical scientists say, okay, you only need to wear the mask if you're on an airplane or in right. lots of these crowded spaces. Um, I, see, and I, I see that I, coming. I think it's coming and I think it's something to look forward to. Oh, absolutely. But you know, there's one thing, and this is going to be controversy, but I think it's, I think it's very important. I do believe for us to travel abroad, especially maybe even in the United States, but abroad, we need to have our shots before we can travel. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I know some people are very against that. So I'm sorry guys, but that's just my own opinion. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I think it's important too, Chris, but I feel like with the Jeep therapy, you know, you've got such, such, so much to offer people. You know, you've got your Jeep Underground magazine that they can connect with you and other people on globally. You've got the sense of community and I lost my ear set. You've got the sense of community, but moreover, you've got the the stillness and the connection right. to nature that people will feel. Right. So it's, it, you know, for health wise, Jeep therapy would be at the top of the list for somebody to consider for, you know, relaxation or a hobby or something for them personally or a couple or a family to become involved in. Right. Well, I think, I think these families that are looking for something to get into, um, something to do as a family, and that's something else I wanted to talk about really quickly, that they should look into Jeep therapies. And if they don't want a Jeep, look into the big truck therapies or look into your quad therapy, something that, you know, could get out with a family and, or just go buy a camper and go camping. And let me tell you something. I, I actually read uh, uh, some research on this. Um, camping and, and, and outdoor sporting things like quads, Jeeps, pickups, things like that are very, getting more and more popular. And that's because families are wanting to be more together now. Yes. Um, we lost a lot of that in the 90s and the early 2000s where families were more uh, do your own thing. The kids were, do, you know, now they're finding that they all want to be together and camp together and go do these things together. And I think that's amazing. I love that. Develop, redeveloping that family unit right. and, you know, deepening the bonds with the parents it's, and the siblings. Right. That's it's coming. Uh, it's coming back. Yeah, it is coming back. And, you know, when the kids are out where they don't have Internet, guess what they're not doing? They're not playing on an iPad or an iPhone. Right, right. They're actually, you know? they, you know, and if you stop, maybe they bring a fishing pole. Maybe they do a little fishing. Maybe they catch a right. few frogs. And, and you know, things that we did when we were kids that right. you know, they take for granted now. Now, certainly I live in a rural area and mm -hmm. a lot, you know, a lot of the homes don't have Internet out where right. we are. So mm -hmm. those kids actually are not sitting around playing games all the time. Right. You know, they're playing out in the yard uh, doing other things. So I think that's awesome. And emotionally, I think people need that rest mm -hmm. from, you know, 40, 50, 60, 80 hour work weeks. I know this right. is something that a lot of healthcare workers may be involved in. And we have a large uh, listening audience that are healthcare workers. You know, Mary's, Mary, Chris's wife, Mary works in a hospital. Mm -hmm. We've got a listening audience at healthcare mm -hmm. workers in Guatemala. So right. Guatemalans, you may be learning something about Jeep therapy today and introducing something. Yeah. Peace Guatemala. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Back into, back into the community. Right. Um, so the health benefits, Chris, tell me what you have found for yourself as the major health benefit from, from participating in Jeep therapy. What, what has helped well, you the most? 
mine is my mental health. And actually, believe it or not, with my passion in Jeeps and it keeps me excited and happy, it keeps my blood pressure down. Have it you does. found, did they reduce your blood pressure medication, mm -hmm. Chris? They, she been doing the Jeep therapy? My last doctor's appointment he did, which was about three months ago. Right. Um, I go about, I'm due now. I go about every three months, but my blood pressure has gone down. And I do, I do uh, contribute it to my therapies with, with, with Jeeps, but uh, it, it, it makes me happy. It gives me purpose. It gives me, it makes me feel good. You see, you have to understand I lost just before COVID. I lost my dad. He was killed in a nursing home. Yeah. Then right after five months later, I lost my mom and then, and they lived with us and they were my best friends. And then right after that, I almost lost my wife and she, she liked to die on us and was in the hospital for a long time. And then right after my wife gets home from the hospital, COVID hit. So, I mean the next day. And so my whole two years there was just shot to hell and back. Yeah. And if it had not been for already having my Jeep club, Jeep underground, and yeah. other Jeep therapies that I was doing at the time, I don't think I could have survived that very well. Um, I did have therapy, of course, because anybody that's gone through that has had to have some kind of therapy. But not only did I have the physical therapy with the doctor, I had my Jeep therapy and it kept me going. So it physically keeps you active. Absolutely. You're, you're around people. You are socializing you've got that community support yes and so that's something that's really important i it think is. for all of us to be emotionally healthy not to feel isolated is is there an age barrier with the jeep therapy chris or can anybody do this anybody there is not i cannot find an age barrier we have women and, and men in their 80s are doing it and we have kids that are 16 and 18 doing it that are driving Jeeps. I know a 16 year old is getting a new Jeep because she just got her driver's license. And I know children that get in the back seat of the Jeep and have the best fun of their life. So there's not an age group. It's everybody. It's, it's, it's so amazing. So this is inclusion. This is inclusion. Yes. That's a bit, yes. that is like the word of the day now. Yes. This inclusion. Includes everybody. Everybody yes. can be included in Jeep therapy. And There's then you no jump boundaries. in the Jeep and you go to the beach or you go to the mountains or you go have tacos or whatever it is you want to do. But when you do it in a Jeep, it just feels good. <laughs> Even with the big tires, Chris. <laughs> it does. I got a three inch lift on my Jeep and some big tires and I love it. And girl, I have to get on a stool to get in the damn thing. But I, don't care. <laughs> I don't look cool getting in it, but I look cool driving it. <laughs> How can people subscribe to Jeep Underground magazine? Oh man, that's easy. Just go to Jeep Underground Magazine on Facebook. Um, you could like the page and you'll see all my magazines on there. Or you could go to jeepunderground.com. I think it's jeepunderground.com and uh, check out my website. But it's really easy to go through Facebook and just like the page and you can see every month my subscriptions on there and read them and some great stories about families and their Jeeps. It's amazing. Are you posting activities in different communities when oh, yeah, we do. groups contact you, Chris? Yes, we do. Any Jeep group, any Jeep group or Jeep club out there that has anything going on, contact me at Jeep Underground on Facebook. Um, I will put you in the magazine. I will advertise it for you. I have probably 40 to 50,000 readers. Oh, and wow. we'll get it out there. We do not charge you. This is a magazine that that's for you. You've grown that audience to 50,000 in how long, Chris? Two years? Uh, a year. A year. That's amazing. Yeah. Because That's there's no incredible. magazine out there like that. And we're not out there to make money at it. We're out there to, to advertise or to tell your story. And that's what we do. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a Jeep. We have a story about a young lady that was killed. And her, I mean, her, 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 her niece was killed uh, by the hands of, of a step parent and it's child abuse. And they have a Chevy pickup that they take around for child abuse awareness. And we did a huge story on the Chevy pickup and what they do for this little uh, three-year-old girl that was murdered by a stepfather. And, Aww. you know, it's a sad story, but it's a beautiful story. And it doesn't, you know, whatever story you have, or you have some events coming up, contact me on Jeep Underground and, and it's easier. You can go ask Chris, ask Christina Nelson at Yahoo. Ask Christina Nelson at Yahoo. Or catch me at Jeep Underground on Facebook. Anything you want in that magazine, I will definitely look at it for you. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to give the audience a sneak peek into next week. We're going to be getting ready for Mother's Day. And it's not going to be suggesting what gifts to buy for your mom. We're going to have two friends of mine on the air from Atlanta that just lost their mom over the last three months to cancer. And 
Chris, you've lost your mom this past year. I never knew my mom. <sighs> so we're going to be talking about how to celebrate Mother's Day and remember those who were not with us present to, to hopefully bring a little bit of comfort to the audience. So, right. you know, they might all feel like they need a little bit of Jeep therapy next weekend. Um, you can reach me, right. Gail, at medicalbill911.com. You can reach me on my Facebook page. I have a business page, Gail Trowco. And Chris, thank you so much for sharing this with us about Jeep therapy today. It's a, it's something that I've learned a lot from you over the last several months. I know right. it's a joke, but you know, it's I really fun. do drive a Kubota tractor and I love driving the tractor. <laughs> she does. She does. And Hey, I want to give a shout out to Guatemala again, guys. Peace. I, I love you guys for listening. Oh, to we it. love you. We love the questions that you send us. And, um, you know, every, every week, we're getting more emails. They love Stan Pageant, our last guest. The comment we got was Stan Pageant nailed it. So we've got to we've got to give Stan that feedback. So anyway, this is Gail Trialco, Christina Nelson, Healthcare 911. We'll see y'all next week. And Jeepers, is this it, Chris? We'll do that. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>